Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have uh, another Q&A video and that is uh, where I answer all the questions that I cannot answer in the comments. I always uh, try to uh, react on all the comments that you guys post and uh, I really enjoy that. I think this is Q&A 9 already and uh, today we have a few questions. One is from Ricardo. And he said, you have this uh, LBO2 uh, calibrator and uh, you also, it is also possible not only to do voltage and current, but you can also do resistance. And he says, especially on the lower, um, on the lower values, like 20 ohms, I think is the lowest, then uh, your cables could uh, interfere. And uh, he's just wondering how much current goes through it. And... Um, yeah, I already kind of responded. I think it depends also on the meter that you're using because that is the one who is actually providing the current. So let's see. I have uh, three or four meters. We can just see how much current goes through it. Interesting. Thank you, Ricardo. And I have a question from uh, Kreisko. Kreisko. And he said, you had a TES-20 IC tester. This one right there. I zoom in on it later. And uh, it can do 74 series and 40 series. But he is wondering if it also does the uh, HC version. So we are going to try that. And then I had a lot of comments and we responded back and forth. It was from uh, Fadate. And it is about the RFID tester. And uh, he noticed some differences between his and mine. And he also sent me the software. So you can also find that uh, below in the description of this video. I will mention also the video numbers. Um, uh, but I also noticed that there is a difference between, because they all look the same and they are all have different uh, system inside. You have them at one or two or three frequencies. This one is 10 frequencies. So he opened this up and he said, can you check if you have the same uh, components inside and maybe we find some markings on the, on the PCB. So I will open it up and uh, I will make pictures of my PCB and uh, then we can see what it is, if there is any difference. And then I had, uh, I think it's pronounced Xu Yong Yang. He, uh, he asked a question. I made uh, a manual how to update the firmware in these receivers. This is the ATS25. I also made a video how to update the ATS20, but uh, in this case it was uh, specifically, this is a very cool receiver. It's super small and uh, it is a HF receiver in this little package and it also does FM radio starting from 64 up to 108 MHz. So pretty cool, but uh, yeah, it uses the, all the same libraries, but when you get it, it's already old because they are developing constantly. So I made the manual how to update that, but I program it with my Arduino software. So I'm really compiling it. Uh, how to do that, or if you follow step by step, you can do it. But he said, well, I only know how to load the binary file. So uh, if you just can export the binary and put that uh, somewhere to download. So uh, I will do that. So let's start with the uh, calibrator, the LBO2A. So Ricardo, uh, how much influence will the cables have and how much current uh, is going through the, through the device? Uh, when we are trying to measure ohms on the 20 ohms, lowest value, of course, we will notice a little bit more the cables. So let's see what that uh, does. Um, I will connect it to ohms mode. I have several multimeters here. I also will get my Owen here. I have another Owen right here. Uh, with this meter, I will measure the current and then we can change later. But I will first put this one in current mode. This one needs to go to resistor mode. I will turn the camera and you can have a better look at my desk. So I will put it in ohms mode. Uh, first, just let's see uh, the resistance. If that measures 20. And then of course, because we put this one in current mode, 
we not only deal with the cables, but we also deal with the internal shunt. But uh, that's probably very low in the low uh, amps, low currents. Does it say 20 ohms? Well, that's close enough. Yeah, this is a cool device. In these low values, and I think it goes up to, to 20 or something. So that is kind of cool, but we were talking about 20. And uh, now we put this one in uh, current mode. And uh, let's see if we put this one in ohms, auto mode. Then now it says also around 20 ohms. Uh, I want another cable. So now let's measure the current. So uh, out goes then in here. And we go totally wrong. This doesn't work like that. That is very really difficult because we are now with a uh, shunt. I think the same problem we pr we probably have here. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's totally confused. This is probably the same everywhere. So it seems that our uh, shunt in the lowest value is around 100 ohms, because that is what we are measuring in both, uh, both our devices. This is set to 20, this is set to 120, so the shunt is probably 100 ohms. That seems a lot, but in very, very low currents, maybe it is not. Um, I can do the same here, but we probably end up with more or less the same. Now this one is actually better. Now this one is probably 10 ohms, because now I have 20 and 30, okay, interesting. What about then the HP? In the HP it actually kind of works. And then it says uh, 0.3 milliamps. So I'm surprised this, this trick works with HP. So they have very, very low valuations. And this one also. This one is around 10 ohms, but this one is really 100. And this one also. So this modern have a much higher shunt for the lower values. Okay, then the question, Psycho Psycho, uh, about the test 200. It is this uh, nice IC tester. I will uh, zoom in. I had also many questions because the, the seller is not really clear about it. Here is the power plug. It is 12 volts and it's positive in the middle, but I mentioned it nowhere. So I had answered that question at least a few times so now you know I will zoom in and we try to first do a normal 40 series normal 74 series and then try to see if it also does the HG version here we have it as I said positive in the middle we just put it in I think it goes like this switch it on Oh, it's a little bit loose. Let's 
switch it on. Here it goes. And well, let's see. I had some prepared some stuff. Let's see what is this. This is in the uh, LS version. Let me get the microscope. Okay, let's see what we have. I switched on the microscope because I can't read it. It is the 74LS07. So uh, let's get to the 07 here. Okay. I think we put it so as low as possible. So we selected the correct and then we put test and it checks out okay but we knew this the 74 series would uh, be working so let's get another one we have here a 40 49 I think I need to switch my mode to 40 yeah I think it was 49, right? Let me check again. 44.9, yes. Okay. Put it in as low as possible. Put the test. It agrees. But now the question does it also work on the HG? So let's see, I think I have here. Yeah, 47,390. Oh, first of all, you can check is it even here. 390, okay. Does it even go that high? Yes, it has one. Okay. Okay, let's put the 390 in. Push test. Seems to be working. Great. Well, I only quickly could find the 390. So I hope that answered your question. That one at least worked as a HG version. Um, so, Falate, uh, you ask about this uh, RFID tester. Goes by different brands, different names. Even the startup screen is different for all. And uh, you, even if it looks the same, it can still make a difference. If it can only do one frequency or ten frequencies, I know this one can do ten. And uh, well, I copied also some keys that worked. Um, but you can also see you have them with the blue background, you have many difference. And uh, I think I, I can even switch types here in the top, types and frequencies. So, yeah, sorry about the beep. So that makes sense because this, uh, the, even though you can read the RFID, if your chip is also coded, that could be on a different frequency, so that's why this one is 10 frequencies. Um, but to answer your question, you gave me a whole list with all your hardware specifications. I will just open it up and make some pictures for you. So let's uh, open it up. Need to see which one works best. I hope I don't break, break it. Uh, it has a lot of screws, I must say. Uh, oh! I now see this that if you program a card you can actually put it in the elastic band. I see that now I thought it was just some sort of this uh, I don't know the name but and it just protects it from damaging but you can actually put the card in the need okay. So those screws are terribly to hold the elastic band so I'm not gonna open those. I will put it on in a microscope later. Hmm. If 
you look here in the battery compartment, you find some holes here. I think that's how they program it in the factory. Interesting. Okay, that is easy to open. And we can see the speaker and the antenna. So if we are really sick of the noise, we can even remove that. It is open. Here we have the speaker. We can maybe put a little resistor here. They also have this little... I don't know why is this. It seems like a little antenna. But it is just something that is a left behind. It's a left behind. Here you have the antenna. And yeah, I actually like to see what is underneath. My warranty is already foiled. Huh. So it seems to be uh, Furui. And uh, well, I like to see on the microscope and then you can see the, the ICs that are on there. Let's switch it on. This is the DM9 microscope. I really enjoy it. I use it a lot. Let me zoom in a bit. And let me see if I can get the first one. Does it still have something on it? And now they shaved it off. What I have here. There is something that I'm a bit shaky today. Okay, this one we can read. This one they shave off also. So there is not much to see, but I will make some close up uh, pictures. So, uh, Xu Yong Yang, um, I did what you asked me to export uh, the bin file for the ATS25. That is this one right here. Uh, but I didn't get one, I just get four, uh, including the bootloader and everything. So, those four files, including, I think I also put the address map also with it. So, it were four or four, four or five files. I put them in the zip and uh, put them for you in the description to download. So hopefully that helps. So that's it. Q&A number nine. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.